Senator Conroy himself said yesterday that the issues are well known, his proposals have been debated, and we all know where everyone stands. Bollocks. Welcome to Media Watch. I'm Jonathan Holmes, and that was the always forthright CEO of News Limited, Kim Williams. As it happens, I agree with him. The government's proposals aren't nearly as draconian as those recommended by the Finkelstein report last year, but they're new, they're quite complex, and we should be given the time to examine them, as Kim Williams puts it, in a sober, disciplined way. Sydney's Daily Telegraph has helped enormously. On Wednesday, it dressed Stephen Conroy up as Joseph Stalin, who murdered millions. On Thursday, it apologised to Joseph Stalin for making such an odious comparison. On Friday, it dressed the Minister of Communications up in a grass skirt to compare him to Frank Bainimarama of Fiji. And yesterday, the Sunday Telegraph ran a group picture of what it called 32 media heavyweights under the headline... The men of TV vent free speech outrage. But to use Mr Williams's colourful phrase, that is absolute... Bollocks. The men have been gathered together to talk about their jobs. And they do so in a separate story on page 112. Both pictures were taken two weeks before Senator Conroy unveiled his plans. Subsequently, the TV stars were asked for their views on the media reforms. Some opposed them, some made no comment, some supported them. What they haven't done is... United to share their concerns about the government's controversial media reforms. In fact, there's been a lot of bollocks talked about this matter, some of it by Mr Williams. For example, the government is proposing that newspaper publishers must belong to an accredited self-regulatory body with adequate standards and complaints mechanisms. If they don't, their journalists will lose the exemption from the provisions of the Privacy Act that they currently enjoy. Well, that, says Kim Williams, is... A travesty of the most heinous kind to be discussing the elimination of one of the great protections for journalism in Australia, which is the security of the shield laws under the Privacy Act, is action of of an extremist nature that goes to the very heart of the operation of free speech in our society. Where could such a heinous and extremist notion have come from? Well, here's an excerpt from a submission to the Finkelstein Inquiry. It can be argued that some rights and privileges should be conditional on the person being subject to an appropriate system for setting, monitoring and applying good standards of media practice. One option could be to apply this approach to the Privacy Act exemption and designate the Press Council as the organisation to which print and internet publishers would be required to subscribe and to comply with its rules. And who suggested that? Why, the... Australian Press Council. That's who? Oh, my goodness. Of course, News Limited didn't necessarily agree with every detail of the Press Council's submissions, but even the telly would hardly call Press Council Chairman Julian Disney a Stalinist, would it? Anyway, the Press Council's submission went on to concede that if its members were to enjoy the privacy exemption exclusively... This would require the Council to ensure and demonstrate that its privacy standards are adequate and effectively enforced. Well, you could argue that the government has simply taken up the Press Council's suggestion, except that it's going to be required to demonstrate, to a public interest media advocate, that all its media standards, not just those relating to privacy, are... ...adequate and effectively enforced. Mind you, the Press Council isn't happy about it. Professor Disney tells us that... The Council does not support the proposed role for the advocate, especially if the benchmarks he or she is to apply are so unacceptably broad and discretionary as in the current bill. The fact is almost nobody likes the new proposals, either because they're too strong or because they're too weak. They may well not get through the Parliament, and if they do, the opposition says it will repeal them if it wins government in September. Meanwhile, if you're thinking of complaining to the Press Council about the Telegraph's coverage... Don't bother. A number of people have already tried. The response? The Council will not be processing complaints concerning articles dealing with government proposals on media reform. This is because the subject matter directly concerns the Council and we might be seen to have a conflict of interest. How convenient. And now to an example of the sort of behaviour that makes so many people long for tougher regulation of the media 
in print, on TV and online. Unmasked. Tristan Barker, Australia's worst internet troll, being investigated by police. Jonathan Marshall in Rotorua, New Zealand. You may remember Jonathan Marshall. He's one of News Limited's Young Guns, their network investigations editor, no less. After a controversial career in New Zealand, he made the big time in Australia last year by secretly recording that notorious speech when Alan Jones said that Julia Gillard's father had died of shame. From unmasking an old troll, Marshall is now unmasking a young one. Tristan Barker has used internet portals, Facebook and Twitter to encourage harassment and ridicule of everyone from Muslims, businesses, local and overseas celebrities, murder victims and people who have committed suicide as a result of online bullying. I would consider myself an entertainer, he boasted. Now, as we all know, nothing fuels a tabloid news story like moral indignation. And Tristan Barker, at first sight, deserves plenty. A classic attention-seeking 18-year-old, his foul-mouthed rants on Facebook are provocative to say the least. But there's more to them than you'd guess from News' graphic. Tristan Barker's vilest outbursts. Cyberbullying victim Amanda Todd. In a 10-minute rant, Barker labelled the 16-year-old US cyberbullying and suicide victim as slutty, attention-seeking and a histrionic attention whore. Well, yes, he did. But he also had a message for his hundreds of thousands of young Facebook fans that wasn't vile at all. And instead of complaining about what's going on right now, how about you go out there and you find a sad kid, you find someone who's sitting on their own, someone who's having an issue, and you have a word with them, and maybe just let them hang out with you. Maybe that, that's, that's going to prevent more suicide than talking about Amanda Todd is. That's the good side of Tristan Barker, but we're not denying that he and his so-called face beef team have a nasty side too. So it's not young Mr Barker we're concerned about tonight. As we'll see shortly, he and his mates can look after themselves. It's the ethics of Jonathan Marshall of News Limited and the culpable sloppiness of Today Tonight. First, Marshall. After unmasking Tristan Barker as a super troll, he turned his attention to Barker's parents. On March the 4th, Jonathan Marshall reported, The teenager's father has now been criticised after commenting on his son's views, particularly about United States teenager Amanda Todd, who hanged herself in October 2012. When News Limited spoke to Mr Barker Sr. about his son's views, he said, Was she? Was she slutty and attention-seeking? With that quote, Marshall had himself a story. Because Michael Barker, Tristan's father, is a minor celebrity, the drummer in the band Split Ends. And as Marshall reported, he was... To play with his two-man blues and roots group, The Swamp Thing, at this weekend's four-day Adelaide Music Festival. But not if Marshall could help it. Wome Adelaide Festival organisers are facing pressure to dump a lead act after one of the band's two members made derogatory comments about a suicide victim. In fact, Marshall had busied himself ringing Wome Adelaide sponsors to ask if they were outraged by the quote, and the Wome Adelaide Festival organisers to ask if they were going to drop Swamp Thing from their bill. Festival director Ian Scobie tells Media Watch. The story that Wom Adelaide was considering dropping Swamp Thing was, in my view, an invention of Jonathan's. The pressure was successfully resisted. Swamp Thing played at Wom Adelaide. But it seems the whole story may have been based on a deception. Michael Barker's wife, Cathy, was with him when he answered Marshall's questions. They both say that they had no idea they were being asked about a well-known suicide victim. Marshall only asked them... What do you think of Tristan's comments on the internet calling a girl slutty and attention-seeking? Mike asked, well, was she? As Jonathan Marshall did not say it was anyone in particular, let alone Amanda Todd. Is that true? As we'll see, the interview was covertly recorded. But despite asking, so far, we haven't been able to hear or view the recording. Meanwhile, today tonight's David Eccleston got in on the act. He travelled to New Zealand to meet Tristan Barker, who had got himself up in a Nazi uniform for the occasion. And then the young man stupidly clouted Eccleston. Don't touch me, Once on camera and allegedly once again off camera. You got that on camera. Get your hand off me. Tristan Barker is now facing assault charges in New Zealand and today, tonight, had some great footage. 
Back in Australia, it got an even better break. An email from a certain Jasmine Frost complaining she'd been cyberbullied by Tristan Barker. An interview with the young woman was quickly organised and shot in a park in Melbourne. He said you're a ugly mole who has a low-life job. It's going nowhere. Um, you might as well just kill yourself now. But according to text messages sent to Media Watch by the young woman, it wasn't until Transmission Day last Monday that the producer asked Jasmine... Did you by any chance have or keep any screen grabs of Tristan's abuse? Hey, Naomi. Sorry, unfortunately, I don't. Hey, Jasmine, no problem at all. Don't worry about it. But today tonight should have worried about it. Because as the woman whose real name is Jasmine Van Midi gleefully revealed in a face beef YouTube video, she was one of them. TT had been hoaxed. And all it took was an email entitled Tristan Barker cyberbullied me. And then a three minute phone call to convince one of the most watched and believed news programs in Australia that I was a poor, bullied girl. Red faces at Today Tonight. But once again, the real victim was Tristan's father. David Eccleston put the knife into Michael Barker. His weapon was provided by News Limited's Jonathan Marshall. Michael Barker, I think, has got a lot to answer for. He's clearly aware of what his son's doing. We've put it to his attention. It's been across the news media for the last two weeks. Uh, yet he's encouraging it. News Limited investigations journalist Jonathan Marshall secretly filmed Tristan's parents at their home. You'd expect him to protect his son, but not to be seen to endorse his views. Asked about the Amanda Todd suicide, where his son labelled her an attention-seeking whore, Michael Barker said this. Um, an attention whore who deserved what she got for playing the victim. You notice that we couldn't actually see Michael Barker saying anything. He told Media Watch. The voice heard in the Today Tonight saying an attention whore who deserved what she got for playing the victim is most definitely not me, Michael Barker. It is actually Jonathan Marshall. Remarkably, Today Tonight and Marshall's editor at News Limited have both now confirmed that. It's not Michael Barker's voice, it's Jonathan Marshall's. David Eccleston wasn't involved in the editing, says Today Tonight's executive producer, and adds... We regret the oversight. Oversight. One thing we do know, Jonathan Marshall turned up uninvited at the Barker's home in New Zealand in February and secretly videoed them. And according to Cathy Barker, he lied about it. At one point during the questioning, Mike asked Jonathan, are you recording us? Jonathan was shaking and said no. And in a later phone conversation, Michael Barker says Marshall denied again that he'd recorded the conversation. A man's reputation has been thoroughly trashed. Is News Limited's Jonathan Marshall responsible for deceptive, dishonest journalism? Is Today Tonight? Are both of them? Jonathan Marshall's executive editor has thanked us for raising these issues. We are treating them very seriously and have started a formal investigation with the journalist involved. Perhaps they realise at News Limited that this isn't the time to be providing more arguments for tougher media regulation. Until next week, good night.